my favorite part right here when white folks come back and find out ex niggas done stole their seats. This is a message to the black man in America from Elijah Muhammad, the messenger of a lot to whom praise is due forever. It ain't a rhyme, it's a lyrical sages letter. I got a mind and it's ticking like a time bomb, hitting every nigga in the head with Islam. And I'm kicking backs to the blacks in the projects. Yo, I got a sword in my hand for the rednecks. Damn the KKK. Your cross burning peck of woods wearing a hood. Yo, we don't play. Go get your buddies and your white sheets fixed with a badge and a gun.
Assalamu alaikum, family. Can y'all hear me and see me? I want you to press the number one if you can hear me. Well, you can't see me. Can you see the flyer? But can you hear me, though? Oh, we in for a treat today. We in for a treat today. But let's go ahead and open up in prayer. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, surely I am being turned unto thee, striving to be upright to him who originated the heavens and the earth. And I am not among the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for a lot of lords of the worlds. No associate has he, this I am commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king. There is no God but thee, and thou, and I am thou, thou is my Lord, and I am thy servant. And I've been unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So please grant me protection against all my faults, for none grants protection against faults with thee. And guide me to the best of morals. For none can guide me to the best of morals but thee. And turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals. For none can turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals but thee. And know Allah bless Muhammad. And bless the true followers of Muhammad as thou did bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham. For surely thou art praiseworthy and magnified. And know Allah make Muhammad successful. Make the true followers of Muhammad successful. As thou did make Abraham and the true followers of Abraham successful. For surely thou art praiseworthy and magnified. I mean, oh man, let's go. We in for another treat today. Listen, man, we're going to be tuned in to the, to the brother, Nuri Muhammad, as he speaks about the secrets of God. Those of you all who are on the Zoom call with us, please make sure that you take notes today. Um, we've been having a few, you know, giving feedback now. Let's let's try to get as much feedback as we can to get some good dialogue because there's always going to be something that you all hear that maybe I don't hear. There's going to be something that you, you know, uh, catch some some perspective that stands out that does not stand out for someone else. And you know, whenever we're doing something like this, as we do also in study group, we want to allow God to speak through you. You know, through your experience, you're going to catch certain things through my experience and what I'm going through. I'm going to hear certain things. I don't know if you all know this, but when you're going through certain things in life and you go back and read your message to the black man, have y'all noticed that certain things st stands out that you didn't really notice or see was there the first time? Or have you ever been going through something new in your life and you going back and listening to a lecture that you thought you knew? Oh, I heard that one already. But then you hear it again and it hits in a different way. It hits different, as they say, because you're going through different things in life. So different things are standing out. That's the point of me asking for y'all to give feedback because you're going to give a perspective that maybe we didn't catch, that maybe we didn't see, that somebody on the other side needed to hear. All right. So let's get straight to it, fam. We're not going to waste no time. We're going we gonna, to we not going to waste no time. Hold on. Pull this up. Now, hopefully I fixed the audio yesterday because, man, that audio had me frustrated yesterday. So let's see if uh, I was able to fix the audio. So let me know if y'all can hear this now. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, who mercifully intervened in our affairs in the form of a well-made man named Master Fahd Muhammad. He, Master Fahd Muhammad, laid down the greatest love story that has ever been told. No, the greatest love story ever told is not Romeo and Juliet, not Jay-Z and Beyonce. The greatest love story ever told is that God would leave paradise to come and seek and save you and me a people that were lost. So we thank Allah for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Father Muhammad and for coming among us and raising up in our midst his messenger Messiah. In my humble opinion, the greatest black man that ever walked the earth other than God himself. I'm talking about a Georgia-born black man by the name of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Oh, you can do better than that for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. If there were no Elijah Muhammad, there would be no Malcolm X. If there were no Elijah Muhammad, there would be no Kwame Ture. 
If there were no Elijah Muhammad, there would be no H. Rap Brown, there would be no Black Panther Party. If there were no Elijah Muhammad, there wouldn't be any Ma'am Worth Dean. If there were no Elijah Muhammad, there wouldn't be a Muhammad Ali. If there were no Elijah Muhammad, there wouldn't be a Louis Farrakhan. And hell, if it wasn't a Louis Farrakhan, it wouldn't be you and me in this building right now, striving to be real men and real women to save our suffering people. So we have to always make sure that that category of the highest respect in the black consciousness is reserved for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, as he is the executive producer of everything good, powerful, positive, and black that we are experiencing here in the hills of North America. So we thank him for not only teaching us and showing us the way, but we thank him for raising up one in this modern era of time that is the perfected representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He is a man that without a doubt is a divine leader, teacher, and guide for you and me. The messenger and the messianic man of this moment in time. I'm speaking of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It's in their holy and righteous names, my sisters and my brothers, that I greet you in the greeting words of peace of Asalaamu Alaikum. I'm so happy to be here at Moss number seven in New York. Look at how beautiful it is. Look at how beautiful it feels. And before I begin, I want to say to you, Brother Arthur, that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan wanted me to relate to you that he loves you and how proud he is of you and your teaching and your leadership. Show some love for this mighty warrior. Our brother and student minister, Brother Arthur Muhammad, a hard-working and humble soldier for the God. And while you're on your feet, while you're on your feet, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan asked me to extend his love and greetings of As-Salamu Alaikum. We'll, we'll, we'll do just that. Please be seated. Yes, and for anybody looking around at us thinking there's something wrong with us for what we just did. Come on. No, ain't nothing wrong with us for what we did, but there's something wrong with you if you had a problem with it. Because <laughs> last I checked right here in New York when that no good ham sandwich eating judge walks out, or one of these corrupt congressmen, or hell, even whenever the president of the school board walks out. Don't they have a bailiff in the corner that has the nerve out of respect for the judge or the school board president or the congressman or the alderman or the city council president? Don't they say from the corner, all rise? Yes. They, and then they have the nerve to say the honorable such and such now preside. Far come more honorable than any judge in New York. And he's more worthy to be stood for after all he's been standing for us for over 67 years. So whenever he gives that greetings to us, we always stand and return that greetings to that beautiful man. Because if anybody on this planet deserves peace from God, it's a man like the minister that's been working so hard for you and me. So I'm, I'm excited to be here at Muhammad Mosque number seven, the eastern regional headquarters of our nation. We have a subject, and, and I have to say, I don't know about y'all, but I've been having a good week here in New York. Have you all been enjoying yourself so far? Did you leave yesterday with some news that you can use? Was the house better last night? Okay, about seven people. Okay, all right. Part two next week. We got to do... They didn't do the dishes, brother Arthur. They didn't do the dishes, like you said. But I just have felt ever since that we landed here, I felt at home. And I want to say that I didn't know how I would feel coming to New York as the day we were traveling was the day after the anniversary of the loss of my daughter last year. And so I'm still striving to operate and navigate with a broken heart. But I wanted to say even before we began the message, that I thank all of the soldiers in New York that sent flowers, that sent cards, that sent letters, that sent donations to help ease the pain of 
my family. Yes, and you don't know that just that little card sometime that's attached to the bundle of flowers that you decided to find a florist in Indianapolis that you could connect with to send here from New York. Sometime right in the moment where you are on your way down into a dark place, that little car can just lift you back up and keep you from falling any farther. So thank you, Mighty MGT of Moss number seven. Thank you, Mighty FOI, for the love that you showed for our family. Today, my assignment that I've been given is to tackle a subject titled, The Secrets of God. This particular subject will come from or be exposed from a source where most of our knowledge of God has come from. Black people in America have received most of their knowledge, wisdom, and understanding about God or the Supreme Being from a preacher that spoke and taught from a Bible. Now in the work of the resurrection of the dead, which is what is called the resurrection of black people, it's called the resurrection of the dead. We're more than just sleep. When the white man finished his process of kneeling, as they called it, or seasoning, or the slave breaking process, the valuable final product of the slave breaking process was to convert a king, a queen, a god into a negro. So whenever the product of loss of language, loss of name, loss of religion, four ways, more ways, folk ways, norms, God, when we lost everything of value, when we were kidnapped and Caucasianized and westernized and Christianized by the white man. That's right. That's right. After that process of killing off the old, sparing the young, and raising black people with what they call in science premature cognitive commitment, what that says is that if you find an animal or a human being and catch them when they are young, you can train them in a way that they will adopt and, and develop what's called a second nature. Yes. They found through premature cognitive commitment that if you can catch an elephant when it is first born, you can tie the elephant to the string. And even when the elephant gets big and strong enough not just to break a string but pull a rope and pull the whole tent down because of the message in its mind that was sent as a baby that I can't get free, you can keep it on the string even when it's physically strong enough to break the rope and it will stay on that string. They found that you can put fleas in a jar. And even though the, the vertical of a flea is 36 inches, meaning a flea can jump from a standing position three feet uh, up in the air. You can put that young newborn flea into a 10-inch jar, put a piece of plastic over top of the jar, and every time that flea jumps and hits his head, it sends a message to his own memory bank that this is as high as I can jump. At a certain point, you can remove the plastic from the jar and the fleas will never jump and go free. They found that you can put fish in an aquarium and put a piece of glass in the middle of the aquarium. And every time the fish swam and hit the glass, they began to say, this is as far as I can swim. At a certain point, you can remove the glass and the fish will come to that exact spot and automatically turn around even though there's no barrier in its way. So it has been with the black man and woman of North America. We have been like that elephant on a string, those fleas in a jar. We have been like that fish in an aquarium. There is nothing in the way of us making progress no more, but we have now a thought, premature cognitive commitment that had us locked into being less powerful than what we really are. So after the enemy finished performing the task of breaking us. The name and the title we were given was Negro. Yes, the word Negro comes from the Latin word necra, which means dead from the neck up. And what exists from the neck up is the head. Yes. What's in the head is a skull. What's in the skull is a brain. What's in the brain is a mind. What's in the mind is the heart. 
What's in the heart is a soul. I didn't plan on saying that, but I thought y'all might want to know that. So when the Negro is dead from the neck up, his brain is messed up. Mind is messed up. Even heart and soul has been perverted. So, so whenever we go out in the field, in the work of resurrection of the dead, a lot of the other Muslims, they like to set trip on the nation. They call themselves orthodox Muslims. But hell, we the real orthodox Muslims. Whenever you are slew-footed, pigeon-toed, bow-legged, when your baby, you take them to get orthopedic shoes. When your teeth are crooked, you go to an orthodontist. So the word ortho is Greek for straighten out. Dox is, is, is Greek for doctrine. So an orthodox Muslim is a Muslim that believes in a doctrine that straightens people out. There is no doctrine on the face of this earth that straightens out people better than the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. We are the real orthodox Muslims. But our brothers, our sisters, they come. I don't know if they do it in New York, but everywhere else they do. They say, Haki, brother, you all, all talk from the Bible. What You need to quote the Holy Quran, beloved. They told the Honorable Elijah Muhammad the same thing, and he responded, you don't have my mission. See, if the resurrection of the dead is what is the title for getting black people up, if you are going to resurrect someone from the grave, you have to dig them up where they're buried. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care how deep you stick your shovel into Kentucky soil. If someone's buried in Brooklyn, they're not going to get resurrected sticking your shovel in Kentucky. Yeah. To resurrect someone from the grave, you have to dig them up wherever they are buried at. Right. Black people in America are not buried in the Holy Quran. We are buried in the Bible. So if we're going to resurrect our people, we got to dig them up out of where they are buried in. And for the record, every messenger and prophet in the Quran and in the Bible were, in fact, Muslims. There is no messenger or prophet that taught a different religion. It is only when man gets hold of their man that they like that they begin naming religions after that man. Judaism after Judah. Is that right? Christianity named after the title of the man Jesus that has Christ. But by definition, Muslim means one that submits their will entirely to the will of God. All the prophets were Muslims. So you don't need the Holy Quran to teach Islam. You can teach Islam in the Bible. Okay, I only got 40%. Only 40% of y'all agree with that. All right, okay. I say, I say all the prophets were Muslims. Moses was a Muslim. If a Muslim means one that submits their will to the will of God, whenever God called Moses to go to Pharaoh, what did Moses say? He said, why send me? send my brother Aaron instead. Right. But did Moses go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, let my people go? Yes. So Moses' will was for his brother to be chosen, but God's will was for Moses. Moses submitted his will to do the will of God. By definition, he's a Muslim. Right. Is that right? Yes. Abraham prayed for 
for a son and brought birth to Ishmael from his handmaid Hagar. His goal, his will, Abraham was to train Ishmael to make him a prophet, but God's will was for him to sacrifice his son. Did Abraham go to the top of the mountain and prepare to stick a sword down into his son to take his life? And the Bible says, but God stayed his hand. So Abraham's will was to have a son and make a messenger. God's will was to sacrifice. Abraham was a Muslim. Jesus said, it is not my will that I do. But it is the will of the Father who hath sent me. I can't of my own self do nothing. What I hear is what I speak. What the Father commandeth me to do, that is what I do. He, he submits his will. Whenever the cup of death came to Jesus, did not Jesus say, pass this cup before me? In other words, I don't want to drink it, but did he drink it? So he submitted his will to do the will of God. He's a Muslim. I'm willing to, to, to say this. Not only were they Muslims, but all of them was in the nation of Islam. How do you know? How do you know? When you join a nation, you get an X. Is that right? Yes, sir. To cross out that slave name. You get an X because in Roman numerals, X represents the number 10. As soon as you get your X, you're 10 times what you used to be. You get an X because it was a mistake for me to wear the name of a devil. When I'm the direct descendant of God, I need God's name. I made a mistake. In the old days, whenever you seen barrels outside of stars and they had X's on it, that means that they paid their dues. Well, we paid our dues as a people. Well, I submit to you that Adam and Eve was in the nation. The instruction was be fruitful and multiply. What's the symbol of multiplication? Adam X. Eve X. Huh? Jesus was an FOI. We say Jesus Christ, but during Christmas, we replace the word Christ with Xmas. So if Christ can be replaced with X, we can say Jesus X. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Moses and all the children of Israel, they were all FOI and MGT. They all had an X. God told Moses whenever the last plague of death was coming that, that if you want to save your people, have your people put a strike of lamb's blood on their doorposts. A door is the first place you go to to enter into a house. And a name is the first thing you say to enter a conversation with a person. So strike of lamb's blood on the doorpost. What, did, he, did I say strike? That's right. Have any of you ever been bowling before? Yes. That's my favorite sport in concept. Ain't nothing like taking that big black ball. Knocking down them little white pins with them red necks. <laughs> Honey, if you knock all them crackers, I mean all them pins down, you get an X. So Moses had an X. The children of Israel had an X. Y'all all right. <laughs> Our people have been buried in the Bible. As a Muslim follower of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad under the leadership of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we believe in the Bible. But we believe in the truth of the Bible. We also know that the Bible has been tampered with and must be reinterpreted so that man and mankind will not be snared by the many falsehoods that have been added to it. The Bible that we have been given is called the King James Version. Do you know that a version is a person's individual perspective? Depending upon how close you are to an object,
subject. And if something is impeding, your view will determine what version of the story you will give. If there's a car accident on 127th Street, inside the building we can give our version. But we are 200 yards away with a wall and a door blocking our view. But, but someone that's right there at the scene will be able to give their version. Whose version would be more accurate? So when you say this is a Bible and it's King James's version, question is, how far from God was King James? And did he have anything blocking his view? Look him up. King James was a slave trader. Yes, he was. Queen Elizabeth issued what was called a 100-year plan. And inside the 100-year plan was the kidnapping of Africans from Africa, bringing them to America to make them slaves. Did it happen? Yes, sir. Queen Elizabeth didn't live to be 100. Much less remain the queen to be the hundred. So if the task of bringing Africans to America to make slaves was done, who fulfilled the assignment? The next one in, on the post as the king was King James. That's why when we first came to America, the first place we landed was called Jamestown, Virginia. The first body of water we came to after we got out of the ocean was the James River. Named after King James. King James was a homosexual. King James had intercourse with his own mother. How far away from the way of God are you? What kind of version are you going to give of the word of God as a slave trader? Incest. Think over there for a second. Then after that, Read the first page of your Bible. It says this is the King James Version. Listen to these words. Diligently compared and revised. The definition of revised means to change from its original form. If all you're doing is taking one book out of two languages and put it into one, it shouldn't take you 21 years to do it. It shouldn't take you seven years to do it. If all you're doing is taking one book out of two languages and put it in the one, why do you need 54 scholars to help you? And why, when you picked the scholars, did you hide Shakespeare? So, so since Shakespeare was known as a troublemaker and a freak of nature and, and a pervert, they didn't want him attached, but King James liked Shakespeare. That's all I know. So he got a chance. So, so what did he do? He found a way to slide his name in the book. So you go to Psalms 46. On Shakespeare's 46th birthday, count 46 words from the top of Psalms 46, and the word shake appears. Count 46 words up from the bottom of the chapter, and spear appears. He found a way to call himself into the Bible. You say, but the Bible says that this was written by and revealed by God and cannot be tampered with. Yeah, the people that tamper with it put that in there too. So you wouldn't second guess what you were looking at. No, you don't need 54 people in no those seven years. 54 people for seven years? Oh, I don't know about y'all, that's a Keith Sweat moment. Something, something. Something, something just ain't right. It don't take that long. However, however, the Bible must be reinterpreted so that mankind will not be snared, which means trapped by the many falsehoods that have been added to it. So there, there's verses in the Bible that tells the slave to obey their master, not as men pleasers, 
but as if you are serving God. Slaves, be loyal to your earthly masters as you would be to your heavenly father. I know damn sure God didn't put that in there. That's right. That's right. And if he did, I don't want that God that has me comfortable being a slave. Right. And serving the white man like he's God. Right. See, see, the white man knew that the, 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 really the Bible and Quran is our nature on paper. They, they, so, so they knew that in the Bible when it says you cannot serve two masters. You got to love one and he made us call him master. Why? Because repetition of any command. Even if it is not the truth, will begin to be operated like it is. That's right, that's right. Adolf Hitler knew that white was not supreme. That's right. He knew that blonde hair, blue eyes, and pale skin was weak and recessive, but he promoted it like it was superior. Right. Right. And listen to his words. Right. He said, if you repeat a lie long enough, it will become the truth. Not that it actually will be, but by repetition you can... Y'all know I'm telling the truth. How many times have you heard a song that you did not like, but they played it enough times until you did like it? Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-
Clifford, the big red dog, sat on his doghouse. You whisper it to the next person. By the time it went around a circle of about 25 students, by the time it got to the last person, it would be Pookie and Ray ready to drive by on 33rd Street and shot two innocent people. And then what did we say? Say it got lost in translation. So if something has been translated from former, you don't understand what I'm saying. It's got to be reinterpreted. The Bible has been written in parables and metaphors and similes. It's written in poetic language. It's written where, where they try, the, the, the writers are trying to take the known to describe the unknown. They're taking the tangibles that we know about and turning those tangibles into teachables. But our problem is, is because we've been going by the Bible. Instead of into the Bible, we become surface dwellers. So we literally take everything on face value and think that what we read is as is. So we are living in Spookville. And we really think that it was a big dragon knocking stars out with his tail. And that a snake really came out of a tree and start talking to Eve. Right. Eve was a black woman. Black woman ain't listening to no snake. She's not going to be in the, in the building where a snake is. Snake talking, but the snake don't have vocal cords. We can do the math. So if you got a serpent or a snake talking and has no vocal cords, then, then well, wait a minute, that's deep. Because that means that the devil has always been a ventriloquist. That's why we got to be careful just because somebody black listening to what they have to say. Because you don't know whose hand is up their back. Their mouth might be moving, but whose words are they speaking? So no matter what they say, when a leader talks, you might want to listen to what they say right. and weigh it next to the mind of God. Right. So, so because we've been surface dwellers, and don't you know, brothers and sisters, there's a verse in the Quran that says, surely there's a message in creation. Nothing of value is ever on the surface. Right. Everything that is valuable is always buried. Is this the truth? Yes, sir. You don't find treasures of the earth just laying around. Gold is not on top. You got to dig for gold. Diamonds are laying around. You got to dig for diamonds. You can't get a pearl floating on top of a lake or a pond. You got to dive deep into the sea. You have to find the oyster that has been working with a grain of salt from the bottom of the ocean for many years to produce that pearl and then find that one, open it up, pull it out, then come all the way back to the surface. Everything of value you have to dig for. So what will make us think that if the God made everything of a treasure to be dug for that we could be surface dwellers with the scripture and think we're getting the value out of it. So there's some secrets of God that Reverend Porkchop didn't teach. There's some secrets of God that Bishop Hogmouth didn't teach. There's some secrets of God that Deacon Liverleg and them didn't propagate in Sunday school. You never hear the Reverend talk about Deuteronomy 4 and 8 or Leviticus 11 and 7, where it reads that you should not eat the swine flesh, nor even touch its dead carcass. Our, our brother Arthur, I was talking to one of my pastor friends the other day, and I asked him, I said, Brother, why don't you all ever mention hog in the church? I said, it's in the Bible. God said, don't even eat it or even touch it. And I told him, the reason why you don't just want to not eat it but don't even touch it is because inside of the flesh of pig is something called trachina worms. Yeah. These are microscopic maggots yeah. that go into
into the system, eat your digestive fluids, go up the spine, eat the vertebrae, get into the brain, eat the brain cells, and then begin eating the tissue of the eye and turning the eye of the hog eater from white to yellow, from yellow to red. And the brother told me, he said, oh, brother, that's Old Testament teaching. I said, so is tithing. In fact, tithing was first known in the book of Deuteronomy. Cricket, cricket, cricket. And y'all talk about tithing four times a service. But we won't talk about hog one time a year. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the pig was public enemy number one. Don't eat it. Don't even touch it. This is from God. Why? Because whenever the white man had us as slaves, they were looking for the cheapest methodology to feed the slaves. And do you know that a slave, the ideal slave is a black man or woman with a strong capable body with energy in it but a dumb mind inside of that body so whenever pig was given to us they knew that it had calories in it to give us energy for slave labor but they also knew that these microscopic maggots called trachina worms would eat the brain cells as the honorable Elijah Muhammad said sounding our mental power so they knew that the pig was, now, and see, we so crazy right now. You go to a restaurant that sells collard greens with the foot sticking out. <laughs> Sliced ham and, 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 and chitlins. I mean chitlins. <laughs> chitlins. Chitlins. <laughs> chitlins. Speech. Speech impediment. Uh, speech impediment. <laughs> they do kind of smell a little funny now. When grandma was getting them chillings together, you knew it smelled like something had happened. <laughs> chillings are pig intestines. It is the lower part of the intestines that houses the weight right, waste right before elimination. Pigs hold their waste sometime up to four or five months. So when you're eating chitlins, you're literally eating a, 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 a flesh bag that has been marinating in defecation for four or five. Ugh. Honey glazed ham. Grandmother, one day when I was a child, I said, Grandmama, why you put them little things in the top? She said, you talking about the cloves? I said, yeah, why you put cloves all in the hand? She said, baby, that's to suck the poison out. I asked, I said, what part of the pig is the ham? She said, it's the butt. I ain't no butt. Ain't nobody's behind now. Okay, all right, all right. We talked about that yesterday, too. <laughs> so we've got to, from this day forward, you better not eat no hog. A brother told me, he said, uh, he's asking me at the helpful store, he said, brother, Man, what are you doing? He was giving me compliments on my appearance. And I said, well, I'm striving to be a follower of how to eat to live. One meal a day, and this is what I eat. And I haven't, I haven't eaten any meat since I was 16 years old. He said, man. He said, well, how to eat to live? I said, well, rule number one is no hog. He said, oh, man, I don't eat no swine. But I can look in his eyes and see. <laughs> It's got to be, it's got to be at least some sausage in the system. <laughs> something's, something's there. I mean, it's some, some, by, by, it's something. So, you know, black people, we, we act like we don't know what pork is unless the pork name is attached. Right, 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 
So we know that pork chops is pork. So I said, you don't, you don't eat ham? He said, oh, ain't no ham. No. I said, what about sauce? He said, no. Well, I said, what about pepperoni? He, then he said, no, I don't eat pepperoni. I said, okay, maybe he is really telling the truth. And then he said, no, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. <laughs> Keeping it all the way real, I'm going to say this. I do eat bacon, but hold on now, hold on, hold on. See, see, bacon don't have as much pork content, is it, as the other pork? <laughs> I said, where'd you get that from, brother? I said, have you ever wondered why when you get the slab of bacon out the refrigerator, it's this big? But by the time it come out the skillet, it's this little? And you notice that when you eat the bacon, when you're eating it, you're not feeling very full, but an hour later, you start feeling so full that you start belching and the flavor of bacon coming back out of your mouth for the whole day? It's because the trachina worm cannot be killed even by the fire or the grease of a deep fry. You can't freeze the worm. You can't burn the worm. It's an indestructible little worm. It has the ability to ball up into a cyst-like shell that makes it one-tenth of its original size. So the reason why the bacon went from this big to this small is because as soon as heat touched it, the survival mechanism of the millions of microscopic maggots kicked in. And they began to ball up into a protective shell one-tenth of their size, so the bacon became one-tenth of its size. But when it gets into an environment that it likes, calls your stomach. Now the worms come back up. All of a sudden, you feel fuller than you felt when you ate it an hour later, and the taste coming out your mouth. Get off the hole, black man and black woman. It's not soul food. It's slave food. All praise is due to Allah. It's been a secret. It's been a secret. It's been a secret that the black man and woman of North America are the real chosen people of God. You have been given credit to the silver steins and the goldsmiths and the ruby steins and the Spielbergs of this world, these Caucasian Jews that are really cave people that are from the Khazars and the Edomites that came out of the hills and caves of West Asia 4,000 years ago and followed what Moses taught them, which was Islam and technology mixed together. Yeah, take it to the ADL. One of the presidents of the Jewish organizations was in town and asked, would I come to dinner over the chief rabbi's house to have a private discussion, just us, to try to work out some things with no cameras, no so forth. I said, I ain't coming to eat with y'all. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and then what's so crazy, they didn't even call themselves. They sent a Negro liaison from the mayor's office to reach out on their behalf. Yes, sir. I said, well, you go back and tell them that I don't want to have a discussion. I want to have a showdown. <laughs> Not in the private, but in the public. Yeah. I'm telling you that, that, that we will smash them in a public forum to debate the truth of who God's people really are. See, they don't want you to know that we are the real seed of Abraham that we are the real group of people that if you bless us, you are blessed. They want you and I to think that we are niggas and negroes and coons and jungle bunnies and three-fifths of a human being and savages that were let out of Africa and might should be thankful to these good God-fearing Christians for making us slaves. But we are the real chosen people of God. Thus saith the Lord. You say, how you know? According to the Bible, you have to meet up to certain criteria to be the chosen people of God. In Genesis 15, chapter 13 through 15, first criteria to being the chosen people of God, it says, know of a surety, Abraham, that you shall be, your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. 
two requirements. To be the chosen of God, you have to be, number one, the seed of Abraham. Abraham was not white. When Abraham and Sarah were in Egypt, in the Bible, the Egyptians thought that he was an Egyptian. Egypt is in Africa. The word Egypt is a name that comes from a Greek word, Ieptis, which means land of black and burnt skinned people. So if Egypt is the land of black and burnt skinned people and they thought Abraham was an Egyptian, Abraham had to have black burnt skin. So criterion one to being the chosen people of God, you got to be a black man or one. Number one. Number two, you have to be a stranger in a land not yours and be made a slave for 400 years. Well, when Jesus was talking to the Jews, he told the Jews, the truth shall make you free. Listen to the response of the Jews. How can we be made free? Right. Check out John chapter 8, 32nd verse up to the 47th verse. They say, how should we be made free? We have never been in bondage to any man. Well, if the criterion for being the chosen people of God, you've got to be a stranger in a land not yours and be a slave for 400 years, but they've never been in bondage to any man. They're disqualified. I know what the reverend might have said. I know what the history book and what they put on television when they show Moses and Pharaoh and they show this white man and this black man in bondage to a, a black man enslaving a white man and show you these white Jews building pyramids. If the, the slaves of the Bible were building pyramids, tell me this, why come the word pyramid is not in the Bible nowhere? We word search 2,000 different translations of the Holy Co of the Bible, and the word pyramid is nowhere in the Bible. It says that the slaves were making bricks of mud and straw. Pyramids are not made of bricks of mud and straw. They're made of marble. They're made of granite. They're made of they're, they're made of, of of that which is stone that is cut out from the earth. They're not made of mud, bricks of mud, mud, uh, uh, straw and, and mud. The only buildings that were built by slaves that were made of bricks of mud and straw is the White House, the Capitol building, the skyscrapers in America. We are the real children of Abraham. We are the real seed that were slaves. And then it says, after the time that you serve them, not a messenger or prophet, but I'm going to come. God talking. Go ahead. And I'm going to judge that nation whom they have served. Don't, so, now listen to me. Don't get sad because of the fall of America. Mm, right. yes, the hell are you getting sad because America's falling? Right. We already at the bottom. If something is falling and we already at the bottom, that's not time to get sad. That's a time to get out the way. That's all. God didn't forget about the raping of our ancestors. God didn't forget about the murder of 13 million Africans on the shores of Africa. God didn't forget about the murder of 100 million slaves in the Middle Passage. God did not forget about the slaughter of 30 to 40 million of us after we got to America. God has not forgot about the Ku Klux Klan, the skinheads, the night riders, the lynchers. God has not forgot about the police department or the correctional officers or the judges that send your cousin to life in prison for stealing something out of a grocery store. God is here to judge our enemy. All we got to do is get out their way. They're holding us hostage right now. See, whenever the authorities want to get hold of people that's trying to rob the bank, first thing the robbers do is they take hostages. Put the innocent in the way so that they can stay and keep doing their guilty activities. 
the enemy right now is holding us hostage. Yes, he thinks that he can keep us in the way of God and that God's not going to be able to sniper him. God don't have to sniper him. He can just drop the floor from where he's standing. Shake the floor. Send a bug into his ear and kill him with it. Another lecture for another time. Sisters and brothers, it's been kept a secret that we are the real chosen people of God. Now, do y'all remember in, 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 the, in the gospel of Big Mama? I'm gonna say, what, Big Mama got a gospel now. It's some stuff that Big Mama said just as true as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Birds of a feather? That ain't the Bible, that's Big Mama. But it's the truth. You lie down with dogs you're going to get up with? Please. That's not the Quran, that's Big Mama. A family that prays together? Sing together. That's not biblical. That's Big Mama that said that. Right. Whenever she seen you as a young girl and you seem to be a little fast and a little easy, she will pull you to the side and tell you, let me tell you something, girl. Why would he buy the cow? <laughs> oh, y'all got some Big Mamas in New York, huh? <laughs> Big Mama knew what she was talking about. And then when he seen us, she seen us look, as little boy running around trying to mess with a whole bunch of girls. She put us to the side. Let me tell you something, boy. A woman will either make you or break you. That ain't Matthew. That's Big Mama. <laughs> Is that right? Yes, sir. I don't even know what I was going to say. <laughs> but let me say this. I can't remember my big mama I was going to tell you. But, but listen to this. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that when God chooses you, oh, no, that's what I was going to say. Big mama said, to whom much is given? Y'all got some big mamas too, huh? <laughs> to whom much is given what? See, membership has its privileges, but it also so has its responsibilities. Yes, and the minute that you abandon the responsibilities, then you also abandon the privileges. Yes, another lecture for another time. Yes, you all right? Yes, sir. The minister said that when God chooses you, he asks you a question. Do you want to be me? See, so whenever you're the chosen people of God, it's not to walk around with, 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 with royal purple on and gold medallions and, you, you know how we do, jewels hanging off our heads and sticks. I'm the chosen of God. No, to, to, to be the chosen of God, the question is asked, do you want to be me? And the me is God himself. Did you know, brothers and sisters, that we were not born just to be a believer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Believer is a temporary title. Yes, Belief is the absence of knowledge. But by believing and applying what you believe, you graduate from a believer into a knower. Yes, At some point, we're going to have to say that to have a mosque, you don't need 40 active registered believers. You need 40 active registered knowers. This is what attracted me to the nation. Every other religion on the planet has as its goal a believer, a worshiper, a follower. Some might say a saint. Some might say an apostle. Some might even say a companion of God. But in the nation, we don't do our Islam. Come on. To believe in God. Our Islam is to become the God we believe in. That's the finish line of faith, becoming a God. You were born in the image and the likeness of God, is that right? Do you know image is a physical reflection and likeness is a spiritual reflection? Image means that you look like God on the outside and like God on the inside. That's why you, we, we call him Allah. And if you translate Allah into English, 
The base word of Allah is all. When you say Allah, you're saying all the names of God. So when you say Allah, you're saying Jehovah, the self-subsisting one. When you say Allah, you're saying Yahweh. When you say Allah, you're saying Father. When you say Allah, you're saying infinite intelligence. You're saying creator. You're saying every name that God has. You're saying all of them when you say Allah. But you can also break Allah down into an acronym. You know what the acronym is, right? Yes, the acronym is when you have a word, but every letter in the word represents another word. Yes, like CIA is an acronym. Yes, sir. It stands for the Cocaine Import Agency. <laughs> huh? <laughs> FBI finding a black man to incarcerate. <laughs> Media most effective devil in America. Even, even luck is an acronym because you walking around with a, with a rabbit foot on your keychain talking about it's giving you good luck. <laughs> Most honorable large Brahma say ain't no such thing as luck. He said luck is taking advantage of an opportunity when it presents itself. <laughs> so, so if you got a rabbit's foot and you think that it's going to give you some good luck, question is how did the rabbit have four and you got one of his and he couldn't have been too lucky if you got it? <laughs> How's he having four and he ain't have no luck to keep all of them and you got... Come, do the math. Luck is when you labor under correct knowledge. Islam can be broken down into an acronym. It is the ideal system of living for all of man. And if you follow it right at the end of the process of the ideal system of living for all of man, you can say, I self, Lord, am a master. Allah. Arm, leg, leg, arm, head. So, if he's a man, we are men. Likeness means that everything God is on the inside, we are on the inside. The minister said likeness means nature, spirit, mind, and function. So we have the mind. This y'all, y'all not hear what I'm saying. I'm saying black man and black woman, you you have divine DNA. You have holy heredity. Prosperity and piety and power is built in your plasma. You have God's genetic makeup if you're in his image and after his likeness. If you're in the image and likeness of God, everything that's true about God is true about you. If you are in the image and likeness of God, when God looks at you, he sees himself. Our problem is when we look at ourselves, we don't see God. But the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, not sometime, not most time, but every time you look at a black man, you are looking at God. Whatever God can do, you can do. All praise is due to Allah. You say, but my Bible said that God is a spirit. Yeah, finish the rest of the verse. You know, black people love abbreviations. My people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 said, finish the verse. It don't stop there. It says, my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge and because you have rejected knowledge. And the law of your God, I shall now reject your children. So it's not just the rejection. It's not that we are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. We actually are ignorant. Base word of ignorant means to ignore. We have received it, but we've rejected it. And we've rejected the law of God. So when we say, I don't know what's going on, our, my, our, our children are just off the hook. Come on, come on. Could it be that we rejected the law of God? Could it be that we have rejected the wisdom that God gave to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and to the minister? Could it be that we've been rejecting knowledge and the law, therefore the God is showing us ourselves in our children? Could it be? So, so it doesn't say God is a spirit and stop right there. It said, God is a spirit, and you must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. Well, what is the truth about a spirit? The truth about a spirit is that it cannot exist without a body to live in. The mind, the body, and the soul are not independent entities. They are interdependent entities. 
this is the reason why when someone has passed away and you see the body, we are viewing the remains. Right. Definition of remains is that which is left from what once was whole. Right. Well, what's missing if all the organs and the, the limbs are still present? The soul is missing. Yeah, right. So when you have a spirit, it has to have a vehicle to operate in. So the truth about a spirit is that it needs flesh as a tool to exercise its will. Are y'all all right? I'm going to say this, and they, uh, yeah, security, y'all ready? A real man or woman doesn't wish for things. A real believer wills things into existence. <laughs> Listen to me. A true believer doesn't wait to feel good to do good. They do good and make themselves feel good. <laughs> see, see, the, the Bible says that he gave us power and dominion. Over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and every creeping thing that crawls on the earth. In our book, Quran, it says in chapter 14 that God has made subservient to man. Right. The seas and the ships thereof, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything in the heavens and the earth is subservient to man. Under our authority and control. Come on, sir. The spirit is in the universe. Come on, so a true believer doesn't sit and wait for the spirit to move them. A true believer gets up and moves the spirit. You are God. You don't have to wait to feel it. Do it and make yourself feel it. You all right? Yes, sir. It's been a secret who the real devil is. We have been making the devil some anorexic, Pantyhose wearing, pitchfork having, little fella underneath the ground waiting to burn us while we're dead, after we're dead. Well, I have breaking news for you, just in case you didn't know. There is no little skinny dude under the ground in a bodysuit ready to burn you after you're dead. The Bible says that hell was seven times hotter than the sun. But the sun is 93 million miles away. It's 853,000 miles in diameter, and it burns at 14,072 degrees. In eight minutes and 20 seconds, one ray of light can travel from the sun to the Earth's equator and cause the Earth to rotate because light is moving at 186,000 miles per second. Well, wait a minute now. If you've got a, a sun that's 93 million miles away starting forest fires on the earth, and you telling me hell is seven times hotter than the sun, and if hell is going to be an equal opportunity that everybody should be able to go from all over the world, it should be in the middle of the planet. Well, the earth is only 7,926 miles in diameter, so hell will be 4,000 miles away. So you're telling me 93 million miles away starting forest fires on the earth, but you got a hell underneath the ground that's 98,000 degrees and only 4,000 miles away. How are we still here? How are we here? There ain't no devil down there. In, in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3, it says that day shall not come. Except there be a falling away first. Listen to the description of the devil. And the man of sin be revealed. Not the spirit of sin. But the man of sin has to be revealed. Y'all all right? See, it's bad whenever we don't know the number one opponent of God and who he really is. But it's even worse when we don't even know who the God we believe in really is. So in the, in the Bible, in the book of, of, of Revelations, the 10th chapter and the 7th verse, l listen to what it says. It says, on that day when the seventh angel sounds his trumpet, the mystery of God will be finished. The word mystery means that which has been hidden or not made known. 
So we got two big problems in the world right now. The man of sin got to be revealed. We don't know who the devil is. Even worse, the, the, the mystery of God has to be finished. We don't even know who God is. It said the seventh angel is going to sound his trumpet. Oh, man, think about that. Do you know what a trumpet is for? Historically, you use a trumpet to wake people up. You use a trumpet to call the village to the battlefield. You play the trumpet to let the town know that the king has arrived. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that if I had any symbol to represent my work, it would be the trumpet. And told the minister and had it coming out of the corner of the paper. Seventh angel. See, the number seven is, see, angels are not spooks of spirits. Angels are not some little half ghost, half person with chicken wings on their back. What? The word angel in Arabic and Hebrew is malak. Malak means messenger of God. The Holy Quran says that if you were spirits, I would have sent you a spirit. But since you are human beings, I'll send you a human being. Be careful how you entertain strangers. For you may be entertaining an angel unaware. Well, you don't entertain no half ghosts, half people with chicken wings. You interview regular people. Is that right? We entertain human beings. So our angel is not a ghost. Our angel is a human being. So there's a human being that's going to be an angel or a malak or a messenger, and he's going to be found somewhere connected to the number seven and a symbol of a trumpet. Well, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is the seventh child of 13. And he said, if I had any symbol to represent my work, it would be the trumpet. And it is he, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, that is the only and the first man not to teach belief in God, but to teach you how God created himself and how to become the God you believe in. He is that seventh angel that is revealing the secret of God. Y'all all right? It is a secret that heaven and hell is not somewhere you go after you're dead. Heaven and hell are not places. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said heaven and hell are states of mind, states of being. They are conditions of life. He said you can have your heaven right here on earth. The hereafter for my followers is not yet tomorrow. My hereafter is when what? So you're saying, well, what, what, what about what's going on in the world? I mean, everything's falling apart. The dollar's declining. Yeah, all praise is due to Allah. <laughs> Hey man, food shortage, interest rate, so forth. Yeah, all praise is due to Allah. It's called the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. See, these are two opposite extremes existed in one environment at the same time. The only way two conditions can exist in one environment at the same time is if different people are experiencing different stuff. So it's dreadful for some and it's great for others. This is the day for it's great for the black man. Great for the black woman. Great for the believer, great for the righteous, and dreadful for the devil that's been given hell to this planet for the last 6,000 years. It's their day of dream. He didn't say the hereafter for my followers is after America falls. He didn't say the hereafter for my followers is after the white man's power is broken. He said the hereafter for my followers is now. That means we can be in heaven while we live in hell. We can be in the here and the now and still exist mentally, spiritually, and physically in a hereafter. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. No, we've we been knowing that heaven and hell really wasn't a place. We knew it was a condition of life. See somebody all disfigured and messed up, you said, man, he's ugly as hell. <laughs> He alive, he ain't dead. You don't have no air condition? Summertime, what you say? Hot as hell. You don't have no heat in the winter, what happened? 
The two opposite extreme, but it's still as hell. Somebody asks you to borrow some money, you reach in the pocket, look, hey, I'm broke as hell. And if you think you're going to die and float away one day, you crazy as hell. No, you have to build your own. Okay, I only got three people that clap for that. Okay. <laughs> I, I just seen a thinking cloud right there right, right. that says, but Jesus is in heaven, and he said, I go forth to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may also be. Yeah, but he wasn't talking about a physical place. He was talking about a level of thinking, a level of existence, a, a, a degree of power that you can execute in the world. Jesus is not somewhere living on a cloud somewhere. Right, right. I, see, that's the surface dwelling. That's the literal. That's not digging deep. That's going by the Bible, not into the Bible. See, it, it says that Jesus was taken away unto heaven on a cloud. And he shall return in like manner. That's not literal. Go to the Nassau website and look at the average speed of a cloud. Lower clouds move at 6 to 10 miles per hour. Higher clouds move at 60 to 100 miles per hour. The mathematics say the average speed of a cloud is 60 miles per hour. Do y'all see where I'm going with this? At 60 miles per hour, he's going to heaven on a cloud. But the farthest planet in our solar system is Pluto, 4,600,000,000 miles from the sun, 4,700,000,000 miles away from the earth. So he has to travel 4,700,000,000 miles just to get out of this galaxy so he can get to heaven. Right. And he's moving at 60 miles per hour. <laughs> Mathematically computing at 60 miles per hour to get past Pluto, it would take Jesus 8,569 years. <laughs> Problem is, he's only been gone for 2023. <laughs> so hell, he ain't made to Mars yet. <laughs> Much less heaven. It's a thinking. It's a state of mind. It's a state of being. It's a condition of life. You can have heaven right here, right now, while you on earth. All praise are due to Allah. Oh, got to close out. Got to close out. Last but not least, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that the secret of God is found in the woman. Come on. Listen, listen. Listen to these words. He said, every man has a woman in him. Problem is, we feeding it too much. said every man has a woman in him. Right. Problem is, is we're doing too much feeding of that woman in him. 
Y'all could have clapped too now. It's still the truth. Petty, man. Y'all petty. That was petty. <laughs> <laughs> truth is the truth. And you might not be that kind of man, but you know what I'm trying to say. Too many, too many punctified men. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know about y'all, but it, it bothers me to see black women being mishandled by the police all over America. And not only is, is filming going on, but every time filming is going on, I hear a deep-voiced black man in the background talking about get off of her, leave her alone. What the hell is wrong with you as a man watching your sister get beat or mishandled by some crackers in a uniform? Hell, a real man, a real man, if he gonna do any recording, he can't put that thing in selfie mode. And say, look, the, I'm gonna send. The, look, this message is for my wife, for my children, and for my mother. Right now, there is a cracker on top of a sister, beating this sister, and I'd be damned if I let it go down. So this might be the last time y'all hear from me. I want you to know I love you. Put the phone down, pick the cracker up, and beat his ass. Regulate the affairs. You know, listen to me. A badge and a gun. Does not, does not deactivate the masculine mandate God put in you. We are obligated from God to protect our women. You will not disrespect our women and get away with it. That's what real men do. Too much. So, okay, let's back. Minister said, if you notice the male has the X and the Y chromosome, which has the male and the female part. The female has the X chromosome. As Allah came out of the womb, the Holy Quran calls it triple darkness. He had a womb within himself. He studied himself, and from himself he fashioned woman. She is the, his first act of creation. The first Muslim in the world was a black woman. Wow, think about that. Wow. Takbir! Takbir! All praise is due to Allah. And for those of you that are our guests, Takbir does not mean blow up a bus. <laughs> it means glorify God. And what you heard them say was, God is the greatest in Arabic. So here's our problem. This is where we're going wrong. He said, this is why you don't understand the woman and you cannot deal with a woman. You think she is man's woman. She is the woman of God. Women are fascinated with men who are doing things. That's right. Y'all yeah, ready? Men, women are fascinated with men who are doing things, who are going places, because they are born from a God who did things. Women do not like to be saddled down with a man who is going nowhere and doing nothing and is without aim and purpose. The secret to God is in her. So we shouldn't just protect, provide, maintain. We should also study her. Oh, y'all get it. Y'all get it, sis. Y'all get it. Y'all still all right? And, and... Sisters, not only should you be an advocate for men respecting you. Security, y'all ready? Yeah. 
But how can you tell men to respect you and you all don't even respect each other? You're so offended when men cheat on you, disrespect you, and treat you like a piece of meat, but you're not offended whenever you gossip and slack talk and tear down your own sisters. Train men how to treat you by how you treat yourself and each other. Develop a circle of sisterhood where you make a covenant with your sisters all over the world that I'm not letting no other woman's man get me. If you with her, be with her. Leave me alone. i tell you something, sisters. When you know your value, you'll stop giving men discounts. You'll stop selling yourself so cheap. When you really know your value, you'll come off that clearance rack and get back behind the glass where all the valuable stuff is at. Sister had sent me a message and she was, she was offended. She was saying that I don't understand. I'm so sick of these ends all in my DM always trying to holler at me and talk to me and they don't want nothing. They disrespectful. All they try and do is get some, some lay down. I ain't, I'm not fooling with these. I'm sick of this. I said, well, I'm, let me check out your, your page. I said, oh. There's a lot of swimsuits on here. It's a, huh? Uh, it, what is this account called? Thirst Trap? <laughs> what? And I told the sister, I said, sister, there's no excuse for a man disrespecting a woman even if she doesn't respect herself. That's right. That's right. But I do, do want to suggest to you that you can make it a lot easier by the way you present yourself. I said, unfortunately, I checked out your page and I just want you to consider something. Cheap prices attract customers. You don't want a customer, you want a husband. You want a good man. But the way you're broadcasting and marketing yourself, you're looking for a customer, not a companion. She said, she said, well, I understand where you're coming from. This is her words. But how am I supposed to get a man if I don't show him something? I said, sister, let me tell you something. If all he wants from you is breasts, legs, and thighs, send him to KFC. <laughs> this is word bonds. Word is bond. <laughs> the secret of God is found in the woman. That's not for us to read you. That's also for you to read yourself. The nature of the woman is built where you already have been gifted the primary attributes of God that are most significant in the process of building a new world. You are already born as a woman patient, long-suffering. You already are born like a Lord. The word Lord in Arabic is Rab, which means the creator and the nurturer and evolver of a thing stage by stage until it reaches perfection. That's what mothers do. You're already born with those characteristics that we need. So study yourself and execute those. We got to study you and we got to execute them. And I'm going to say this and close out. The most important decision you will ever make in your life after choosing to believe in God is choosing the right person to spend the rest of your life with. Let me tell you something. Your mate will either confine you to complacency or help you to evolve and grow into your greatness. They will either be your other half or they'll make you half of yourself. The minister said that a good relationship brings out the best in you and makes you more useful, 
And a bad relationship brings out the worst in you and causes you to age prematurely. If you want to be young, if you want to be beautiful, if you want to be strong, if you want to be successful, if you want to resurrect the dead, if you want to be a millionaire, if you want to be a scholar, if you want to be happy, if you want to be strong, you got to get the right God. And you got to get the right mate. Easy to pick the right God. His name is Master Fad Muhammad. Come here and find you the right mate, which is an FOI for MGT and an MGT for FOI. Thank you for listening. I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> ma, 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 ma. What a message. What a message. All praise is due to Allah. Man, I know we should have some good feedback over here on the Zoom. Now y'all ain't been on camera lately. I noticed that y'all, you, y'all done got a little, y'all done got a little fatigue, boy. They say I'm laying in this bed, turn that audio on, brother Bill, but I ain't been get up and put no. <laughs> nah, but let's go ahead and get to the feedback, man. Um, something that's one of the things that stood out for me. He was talking about Moses, and you know. He, he, I made the point the other day about Jesus submitting his will, but he made a great point. He said Moses didn't want to do, he didn't want to speak, but he submitted his will. Abraham wanted something, but God wanted something else, and he submitted his will. And look, that's how Abraham became the friend of God. Wow, willing to sacrifice his own son. But I have something very important for us as we hear the secrets of God. And those of us who want to develop a better, closer relationship with God, there is something in the scripture that I want to share that maybe the enemy, God of this world, which is Satan, is doing to us that stops us from doing that. Anybody want a closer relationship with God? Just press the number one. Anybody, you, you like, man, I just, I sure wish I can just develop a closer, better, intimate relationship with the God. Just press the number one. Anybody, you just feel like growing up, you didn't get the real word of God. You didn't get the right interpretation. As we hear people from the nation, Brother Neri, the minister, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, breaking down the exegesis of the scripture, the metaphors, the allegory. You like, man, I sure wish I can learn more of that. Look at all them ones. Now watch this. I want to read Exodus 4 and 5 and see if y'all can kind of see uh, some things that done went wrong. Was. Watch this here. Moses, we talking about chapter four of Exodus. Moses answered, what if they do not believe me or listen to me or say the Lord did not appear to you? Now, this is Moses speaking. Who's supposed to be going to save the children of Israel? Then the Lord said to him, what is it that is in your hand? He said, a staff. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, reach in your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Then the Lord said, put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand inside his cloak and when he took it out, the skin was leprous. It had become as white as snow. Ooh, hold on. Now put it back into your cloak, he said. So Moses put his hand back into his cloak and when he took it out, it was restored. Now let's stop right there. Now this is not my point. That's not the point of me reading this, but let's just think about this mathematically. If he sticks his hand somewhere and then he takes it out, and it's white as snow. Then he said he put it back in and it was restored. What was it restored to? What shade was it? Rest- if it came out. OK, you put it in and then the, the miracle, if you will, is that it came out white as snow. So when you put it back in and it's restored. OK, yeah, yeah. OK, let's let's continue. Then the Lord said, if they do not believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe these two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile 
and pour it on the dry ground, the water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. So basically, he's trying to get him to believe. Watch this. Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, never in the past, nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes the deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, pardon your servant. Lord, please send someone else. Oh, so Moses is who originated to get someone else to do it. Y'all know, get somebody else to do it. Y'all know that, that, that TikTok that's going around? Uh-uh, get somebody else to do it. That's what Moses was saying back then. Hey, get somebody else to do it. Now, the Lord said, all right, all right, all right. Okay, I'm going to send. What about your brother Aaron? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you and he'll be glad to see you. So now he's, he commands Moses to put what he's teaching him into Aaron. And Aaron basically is his mouthpiece. Now they finna go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Now, does that sound familiar to anybody? One who was raised up. Huh? Getting direct instructions directly from God, but he has like a mm, got a speech impediment. I, he he don't speak as eloquent as Aaron, but he's he's the one who's feeding Aaron what to say in his eloquent speech. Uh oh, that sounds like someone who said, "Hey." He's listening to him up there and he's listening to the man and the man is speaking that truth. But he say, man, his English is off. And then the man says, don't listen to how I'm saying it. You listen to what I'm saying and you put it in your fine or eloquent language. How don't that sound familiar? Man, that sound mighty familiar. But let's continue. Well, now we're going to go over to chapter five. This is the part I want to tell us about this. This is the part. I wanted to get us to see something. After Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, let my people go. Hey, who, if you let something go, if I say, hey, let my people go. Is that saying I, I need y'all to be separated from Pharaoh? And don't that kind of sound like that? Let my people go separate, come out of her, my people? Well, who is known in America in the mystery Babylon for saying separation is the best and only answer do for self if we cannot get along in peace? I'm just seeing a lot of similarities here. That's all. But then look at this. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey him and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord and I would not let Israel go. Then they said, the God of the Hebrews have met with us. Now let us take a three day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord, our God, or he may strike us with plagues and with the sword. But the king of Egypt said, and this now we getting to it. I know, I know y'all we getting to it. But now the king of Egypt said, Moses and Aaron, why are you taking the people away from their labor? Ooh. So they, 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 he's taking them away from building their world. In, message, in that book, Message to the Black Man, he says, get an education, not an education to further your slave master's nation, if you will, but get an education that will, that will, Stop you from begging them for a job and you build something for yourself. Whew. Watch this, y'all. This the part. This where they. This where they got us. Then Pharaoh said, "Look, the people of the land are now numerous, and you are stopping them from working." That same day, Pharaoh gave this order to the slave drivers and overseers in charge of the people. You are no longer to supply the people with straw for making bricks. Let them go and gather their own straw 
but require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Now, I had to look that up. You talking about like, no, not that type of straw, not the straw you drink that orange juice in the morning with. This straw is what helps the bricks combine and, you know, stick, stay together. So it was that type of straw as they, as they was making the bricks. So instead of them being supplied with the straw, Right. To make it easier for that brick to stick. To, now they got to go find, go get their own straw. But the killer part is you got to make the same amount. Now, how I'm going to do that? See, that's all a part of the process. Right. So then, man, this is some heavy stuff. I want y'all to see how, how this is happening in modern time. So he says you are no longer to supply the people with straw. For making bricks, let them go and gather their own straw, but require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. Call us lazy now, huh? That is why they are crying out. Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Make them work harder for the people so that they keep working and pay no attention to the lies. Uh oh. Woo. Don't they do? Ain't that what's been happening? Oh, man, I can't come out to the study group. Why? Got to work. See, I can't listen to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's who's trying to get us to the real reality of God. Why? Well, I'm too busy at work. I ain't got time for no three hour lecture. I ain't got time for no four hour lecture. I ain't got time to get to save his day. I ain't got time to get to Wednesday. I ain't got time to get to Friday. I ain't got time to get to Sunday because they working us so hard. Inflation going up. Oh, man. Money is messing up. Oh, man. For all accounts is going down. I don't have time to sit here and study. I ain't got time to read no book. So we never could understand who brought us the real reality of God. We have been too busy to notice that they keep telling us about a Jesus from 2000 years ago when there has been one that has been raised in our midst from the dead, from the dead physically. No, from the dead mentally and spiritually. Luke 17, 12 talks about. Uh, 1721 talks about the kingdom of heaven is within you. The minister teaches us they have tricked us. 75% of it is prophecy, 25% of it is history, but they done flipped it on us. They got us looking in the sky for this heaven while they building theirs right here on earth. They got us looking back, right? They don't, they, they, you seen Brother Neri. What he broke down, hey man, the real children of Abraham, the real people of the book right there is those who was enslaved in a strange land for 400 years. Come on, man, who is that? Who is that describing? But we ain't got time to look into it and read it and see that it's us. Then it says after they time of rule, God would come and judge them. Then it's, is this a spirit coming? We ain't got time to see that it says that you are the real uh, temple of God. You are the real temple of God and that the spirit dwells within you. So we ain't got time to listen to the minister break down that we are gods, meaning that we have force and power that we can exercise and say being it is. We just sitting here waiting around for this spirit to come save us. But we ain't had time. Because we working They got us working Because we got bills to pay Oh, we got card notes to pay for We got lights to stay on So we ain't had time to listen to Moses and Aaron Who has came to the real children of Israel To save us So that's all I want to share On my little portion right there, man uh, I want to give us that Because as we do this power call As y'all listen to other people I want you guys to notice your cousins and people who you try to get on notice how they all is something about being busy. They don't got time for it because this world has made us so busy with everything but God, everything but the resurrection, everything but his way. It's not that we wouldn't cling to it. If you notice, sure, when we hear this word, most of the time, most of us say, I kind of believe that already anyway, because it's our nature. We are simply acting other than ourselves, but it, but we haven't had enough opportunity to hear it. Clearly, we're getting sound bites from the enemy. We're getting sound bites from our uncle who, who don't know either. He done been, he done been God. He taking clips, sound bites out of context, feeding it to you. He ain't even got the full context. So we haven't had time to listen to Moses and Aaron. 
Now, this is the question I have before I go to the Zoom. Now, anybody on Zoom, if y'all got something to share, come on now, press the number one. This y'all time. Now, this is the question I've always, I've been having. Now, many of our people are starting to understand, yeah, we are the real children of Israel. That's right. That's right. The minister been saying that for years and decades. He got, he got lectures on that. But then my question is, if we are the real modern Children of Israel, who is the modern Pharaoh? I think we all can agree this government, that's the real modern Pharaoh. I ain't seen nobody really be confused on that. But my question is, then who is the modern Moses that had a speech impediment or that, 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 that had a staggering tongue that wasn't so eloquent in speech? And who is the modern Aaron who does have the eloquent speech? And who is the modern Moses that met with God face to face? Who is it? So I'll leave it with that. Let's go ahead to Brother Wesley, man. I'm off my, I'm off my, uh, my roster. Let's go. Hold on. Let me make sure the audio, let me get that audio good. Hold on. Let me, man, let me get you. Oh man, boy, these, let me go to it. Here we go. Meeting. All right. Let me get me off the stage. All right. Go ahead, Brother Wesley. Assalamu alaikum. Man, you fried it up. You got to start it off on a good note, brother. All praise due to Allah. Um, so much stood out. And then what you what you had and added to it um, and, and building with your wisdom as well just brought some more thoughts to me. Um, and one of the things that, that stood out that we want to make sure, and I, and I say we, but I'm saying me, that I need to continue to guard against being a surface dweller or a shallow thinker when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to the Quran, when it comes to the books by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the books by the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, all of the student ministers as well. We don't want to just pick and choose the parts that we we like and that we feel pertains to justifying an action or a lack of action that we have. We want to make sure we get the full comprehensive knowledge of it. And that brings me um, to James chapter 122 when it's bringing about um, be ye doers of the word not hearers only deceiving your own selves and that's the biggest part about it is we think that we can we can pull that part like, like the minister brought out uh, our people perish from the lack of knowledge but we don't get to the part where it's about the rejection or ignoring the teachings once we get them so we want to make sure and i'm saying we again me i want to make sure that i'm getting a comprehensive knowledge of these teachings getting a comprehensive knowledge of these words of god and as we are taught as well, that, yes, the Bible was tampered with, but we believe in the truth that's in the Bible. So let's go dig for that truth. Let's not be a surface dweller. Let's not just listen to the power call and say, OK, I got my doses for the day. I'm good. No, let's take the power call. Go get the replays. As we've always been reminded, take notes so that we can pull the parts away. Go look at the testimonials, because all of this is a part of studying. And that's how we get the deeper truth so that we can get to these secrets of God as well. Um, and then lastly, that stuck out to me because uh, I want to say something for the family. I know we're going to get some more ones in here. But uh, when the, when uh, student minister Nuri brought up about um, the brain and how the brain contains the mind and the mind contains the heart and, and the heart contains the soul. And he said, if that mind is corrupted, then the heart and soul is corrupted. And you really can see that in action. So when you feel or when I see myself deviating in anything and I'm looking more so in my past, when I'm looking at my actions that I were taking, then I can look back and say, OK, my heart wasn't in the right place, which means my soul wasn't in the right place, which is a result of my mind not being in the right place. And when we're in a situation where we're in the classroom of the devil, you're not getting that right teaching. So your mind is going to get corrupted where you have that truth mixed with falsehood, where you have the. Uh, the manipulation of the scriptures being brought to you where as we, as he brought up about how the hog is, isn't talked about in church is not talked about that part of the scripture, but we talk about the tithes or we talk about um, the, the love, love of money being the root of all evil and things like that. But we don't get into all of the other intricacies that is, that are damaging us on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Um, and I said, that was the last one, but one more thing as well, because what off, based off what you were speaking on, on how we don't recognize the truth in today. We don't look at the prophecy in the scriptures and bring it modern times to today. And when we get to the point where as we now we see the signs of the times, we don't want to wait till it's too late. And you think about the people in the time of Noah, when that door was closed and everybody want to bang on the door and say, oh, I now I believe what you were saying. This is the time now. And I appreciate this whole week 
so far and what we've been getting and understanding the seeking refuge in the law, um, being able to understand what our position and what we should be doing now is to prepare ourselves for the departure of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, because we don't want to wait till it's too late to try to start studying. We need to be studying now, not beating ourselves up about what we didn't know yesterday. Take advantage of the now and what we have today and start building on that wisdom, start taking in this information, feeding on this truth now so that we can be as prepared as we can. Um, in this time. So I appreciate this. And as alaikum. Praise be to Allah. Let's go over to Sister, Sister Farah. as alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. All right. Um, there were a few things I got from that. That was powerful. So he hit so many different topics. Um, the first thing I want to touch on is where um, he spoke on the, the flea in the jar analogy. Um, what I got out of that was, you know, the only thing keeping us from uh, progressing is our own mind. We've been programmed to think less of ourselves and our capability to execute what it is God puts in our heart to do. Um, you know, we've been We've been killed by them, not just physically, but mentally and spiritually as well. Um, he said the word Negro comes from the word uh, Negra, the Latin word for, um, I think it was dead. Um, we as a people are dead from the neck up, he said. Um, and to resurrect the people, to raise them from the dead, we have to dig them up from wherever they were buried at. He said they're not buried in the Quran. You know, you have to meet them where they're at. Um, you know, like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad did, like the uh, minister did. You know, nobody loves us more than they they do. And they showed that by fulfilling their duty to us. Um, you know, love is more than some feeling. It's duty, sacrifice. And he was willing to sacrifice everything, his music, his old life, to meet us where, uh, where we were in the gutter. You know, at the bottom of the bottom, you know, to dig us out of our graves. Um, another thing I got out of that is when he was speaking on, I love how he brought up the um the pig and how a lot of Christians will say, Oh, that's that's the old testament, you know, where they, you know, speak on us not eating the hog or even touching it. Um, they say, oh, that's the Old Testament, but tithing is in the Old Testament, too. <laughs> and they believe in that. Um, I thought it was crazy when he said some of the pigs waste sits in their system for a whole four to five months. That's that's, that's disgusting. Then we go behind that and eat that. <laughs> Next thing you know, we have a bunch of waste sitting in our gut. Um We've been, he said, we've been living by the Bible, by the Bible, and not into the Bible. Um, we've been allowing others to control and deceive us by the Bible because we we're not um, digging into it ourselves. We taking things at uh, face value. He said, um, "What's another thing?" He said, "Nothing of value is ever on the surface; it's buried. You got to dig to find it, just like you have to dig to find gold." Um, he said Satan got us in hostage, and uh, all we got to do is um get out the way and let Allah deal His judgment on them. You know, he's like when someone's robbing the bank, they use um hostages to kind of distract <laughs> the cops from you know keeping them from uh the money. <laughs> um, he said. Allah, in the word Allah, is the word all. Um, Allah means all the names of God. Or, he said something like that. My bad. It's not word for word. But he, that what well, made me think of, you know, um, since God is in us, I thought of all, you know, all of us. Allah makes up all of us. That makes sense. Um yeah, the he said the secret of God is in woman. There's a in that there's a woman in every man. 
It just takes a good woman on the outside to um, tap into that woman on the inside. That's what I got out of that. And um, I thought of science. It's science. And science is mathematics. And mathematics is Islam. Females have two X chromosomes. The male has uh, the X chromosome as well, but he also has his own chromosome, uh, the Y chromosome that we as females do not have. And that's all I had. Asalaamu Alaikum. Well, excellent. You said, Brother Neri said, what about digging? He mentioned digging twice. Um, well, when you're raising us from the dead, you got to uh, dig us up from uh, where we at our grave. Yeah, but he also said that um you mean nothing of value is ever on the surface is buried. You gotta dig to find it. Yeah, that one. Thank you. That okay. part, um okay. as I think about that, I believe all of us are valuable. And when we think about the the act of digging is not something that's uh well at least not for me. Uh, a pleasurable thing. I think when I first image that came to my mind was life. When I seen digging, I'm looking at, I'm thinking about Martin and Eddie Murphy, how they got there and that, and they digging and, you know, just the digging is not, it's, 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 it's time consuming. It's, uh, difficult. It's struggle. It's pain. It's, uh, it's, it's tiring. And, when I think about something of value, I think many of us are looking for things of value to be on the surface. And the reason that you have not got to the valuable part of what you're trying to find is because you're simply not willing to dig. Uh oh. You probably just simply not willing to dig for that which you are looking for. And you don't became lazy. And you didn't gave up and you say, I'm I'm not going to dig some things with certain people. I may have to dig a little bit. But with certain other people, the gems may be buried a little deeper. Right. And sometimes maybe because you done dug with somebody else and, you know, they was a little bit more developed or they was a little bit more cultivated or the gems were right up under the surface. Now you think everybody's is right up under the surface when your brother and your sister, they may you, they it may be six feet deep. But how but how far are you willing to dig? And if we don't develop that principle of being willing to dig, you're going to find ourselves. We're going to find ourselves probably unsuccessful in a lot of areas because in business, guess what? You got to dig in marriage. Oh, you got to dig. Oh, yeah. When it comes to resurrecting the dead. Oh, you're going to have to dig, man. When you pick up this mission to want to raise someone who is a dead man and they trying to get you bring. Imagine bringing a brother a message, you know, could help him. And he say, nigga, F you on no goddamn paper. Yeah, that that takes place. That happens. Imagine the very person you seeking to save turns on you. Oh, man, are you? But how far are you willing to dig? So if we're not willing to dig for that, which is value sometimes we'll never find it in a lot of areas so i just want to touch on that part that was a good great point that brother neary said i also want to address the, uh, somebody named denina brother denina says i don't believe in ties either because why will we need to give god money when he created everything i resonate with most of the message now let me be honest with you brother god don't need your money but the people in there do. And I just think we just got to be more real. Brother, God don't, God cool, God good. They just got to be real and say, but we need money to keep these lights on, right? We need money to, you know, for whatever the case may be, uh, uh, certain laborers or whatever the case may be, whatever it is. And here's my thing. This is how I view it. If, if I'm giving money to a church and I'm like, Man, why am I giving money to this church? Am I not receiving nothing that's 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 helping me? And you may say, no, nah, man, I ain't shoot. I'm giving 10 percent, giving tithes. I ain't getting nothing from this church. Then go to another church. 
Go where you are getting fed. I go to the store and get chips. Chips ain't doing nothing but killing me. It may taste good. Chips ain't doing nothing but that ain't doing nothing for me, but I'm willing to change my do- exchange my dollar for some chips. I'm willing to exchange for that honey bun. I'm willing to exchange for things that go in and going to come right on out. I'm willing to exchange it for a hat because you don't win ball. Now, we're talking about the word of God that can literally change your life, uplift you, change your mind and change your whole trajectory of life. I'm not willing to give to a pastor, to a minister, to a person that's feeding me. Now, I know what you say. I can go read the Bible on my own. Then go read it on your own. Me personally. Hey, man, when I used to read it, I didn't understand thy this and and, and, and eager thy that. I needed somebody to break it down for me. I needed an exegesis. Yeah, I needed a savior. But y'all may be self. You know this. You know what's going on. I'm self-saved in the same damn condition as the people that ain't saved. But you so-called self-saved. I'm not talking to you. I'm speaking in general, by the way. But we so-called self-saved and we need all this help. Come on, man. Admit that we need. I, I admit I needed help. I needed help with understanding certain allegory, understanding certain metaphors, understanding the reality of God and what the scripture meant and how it applies to me. I appreciate that. I appreciate being able to call my student minister when I'm going through a problem and he can give me a perspective because the minister says it's hard for a man to see himself. Come on, man. If something on my nose, it's hard for me to see it if I'm outside. But my brother can say, ah, I, I can see how you can say that. But let me give you this perspective, brother. And when I get his perspective, I say, oh, thank you. I needed that perspective. And it helps my life. I'm willing to give to that. So now let me just bust that up. Now, nah, if they telling you that your yeah, brother, God needs your money. They, they probably just like God don't God don't need the money. The church do, the the building do, the people do. And if you don't see them as worthy of it, then you just in the wrong place. That just that's just this, that's just the simplest way I can put it. If you say, man, I don't gave ten dollars to this brother and I don't know, man, I just if you feel a certain type of way about ten dollars, man, you you are in the wrong place. And we only giving 10 percent anyway. So if you if you make a thousand dollars, you get 10 percent. If you make a hundred dollars, you get 10 percent. You see what I'm saying? So if you are really hot about 10 percent and you don't think they worthy of 10. Oh, man, you just in the wrong place, brother, because I'm telling you, if you go get real spiritual upliftment, you will be willing. Man, shoot, it ain't 10 percent. Ain't even you will feel bad for not even 10 percent may not even be enough with when, when, when something is literally changed your life. So that's what I would say about tithing. That's just that's just my perspective. I know everybody got a different perspective. That's just my perspective on tithing. No, it's not literally to God, but it's to help the word of God continue to be given to you. That's supposed to be uplifting you mentally and spiritually. Let's go to Sister Sacred. Um, good morning and peace, everyone. I just wanted to um, make a comment on what you were talking about tithing. Not only to the church, I've always had a question. This power call community is excellent. I have been learning so much. Um, Things have been broken down. Questions have been answered. Um, To upgrade to the premium is well worth it. I don't know why we don't have more people that are upgrading or if they don't understand what it means to come over to the Zoom side. But when you're breaking it down, you, you, we have this lesson five days a week. Even if you just do a dollar a day, a dollar a day, that's $5 a week, five times four, that's 20, that's $20 a month. If you just even think of it, even going down on the price, what, what is it to give that amount? I mean, what excuse are you going to come up with that amount of not of, of even giving a dollar a day? I think we average maybe a dollar 25 to get to the 25 um, for the premium. What is the problem? When, we, when you go to college, you're paying thousands of dollars for tuition. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at, we're getting this lesson. I'm on Venmo, I'm on YouTube, and I'm on the Zoom call. And Everywhere 
people are tuning in. We all need to come together. And if it comes, we all need to come together on the premium side. If there is um, a financial problem, send a message to Brother Ben. Explain what's going on. But I, I believe that we all should give if we are, we're getting fruit um, from this. We are all learning. I'm looking at all the comments from everybody. Everybody's learning something. We need to do our part and help. If there's a, a teenager out there who's listening, who's in college, who can't afford it, really on a tight income, message me. I'll sponsor I'll you for, so you can see what this is all about. I don't mind. But just talk to, you know, to Brother Ben or Brother Wesley or, or one of the um, manager people and explain the situation of what, what's making it difficult to upgrade. And like I said, I don't even mind uh, a, a teenager or someone who is really having financial difficulty sponsoring you for at least a month. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Oh, and 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 the um, message was excellent. I'll put my um, testimony in the power call. Thank you. Praise, praise, praise be to Allah. Thank you for that spirit. For those who's wondering what she's talking about, um, I guess I'll share now. I was paying for several months, $4,000 a month to run this power call. I know y'all don't know that. I kind of, I only share that with them personally on the Zoom after I get off YouTube and stuff like that. But since she said it, I'll explain now. For the past months or so, I've, you know, I've paid $4,000 a month to run this for the text messages. I pay for a video editor because I know everybody don't have time to watch it in full two hours sometimes uh, so that you guys can get it in bite sizes. All of the graphics is very important when you're going on YouTube and things of that nature because that's what gets people to tune into the message, the thumbnail. So I got to pay for the thumbnails. We pay, we was paying for the thumbnails on YouTube and on uh and on Facebook. And when I have people come on and teach, you know, pay them as well. So it was a lot of money. I've been, you know, kind of, I ain't going to say sacrificing. I, I look at it as part of my ties, you know, giving back. But uh, that's what I was paying. And so when I explained that to them, they was like, hey, man, shoot, we want to support, man. You doing all this? No, man, you can't be nah. Let me help you. So I asked them inside the Telegram, well, how would you guys like to do a donation? We have our own app or things like that. And most of the people uh, said, let's get our own app. So the app, you guys will always be able to get it for free. But if you guys want to upgrade, it includes being able here on the Zoom so that when we have interviewers, like we're going to have special guests, you guys will be on the Zoom directly to ask them your own questions, not just me. We're going to have a book club that we're starting soon, if not this week before it ends which is Thursday. So we're probably not going to be able to do it this week, but for sure next week we'll start the book club. We have women's only classes, men's only classes. Actually today we have a class on disaster preparedness where men and women inside the premium side will be able to watch that. So that was just a way for people to kind of offset some of the costs that I had because I was paying $4,000 a month to get up here and do this. Now I know you're probably saying, well, brother Ben, it's, it's on YouTube. I didn't, well, what I found is that many people needed that reminder text. And so, of course, I want as many people as possible to get, you know, on. And then the more people that text nation to that number, it increases the uh, the amount of people that the text messages go out to. So I had to continue to go up on my text message plan. So if you guys would like to come over to the power call, that's www.thepowercall.net, uh, www.thepowercall.net. There will always be a free version. But if you would like to upgrade to support, but also guys. We have business classes that we're adding uh, that's already in there. And then we have the book club and then other stuff that we'll be continuing to add for those who upgrade. And it's only $25 a month. All right. So that was that. That's what she that's the context of what she's talking about. So let's go over to Sister Sister Yasina. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So first, amen. You know, there's a gospel song that says you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try so the honorable Elijah Muhammad only had a dime in his pocket and he is now the father of the nation of Islam so you know let's just chew on that for a minute but when the when brother Nuri was talking about the trachina worm it 
brought up a memory of my uncle, one of my uncles I can't stand. And um, we argue all the time because he's a Baptist preacher. And he said to me, he said, um, you know, I don't eat pork anymore. I was like, oh, that's good. You know, I said, what about your congregation? And his response was, you trying to get me, you trying to get my money taken away from me. He said, I can't tell them to stop eating pork. I lose my whole congregation. And I, you know, told him, may he burn in hell. But um, <laughs> he, but that always stuck with me because he was willing to clean up his life and he read message to the black man and he's following message to the black man and he looks very good to be almost 70 but he's not going to lose that money you know the other part of that was when brother nuri spoke about how god has not forgiven those who enslaved our ancestors God has not forgiven the Ku Klux Klan. He's not forgiven any of them. He's not forgiven England. He's not forgiven any of Europe. He's not forgiven those in America who continue to kill us, to malign us, to murder us, and then go home and eat biscuits and gravy and chitlins with their families. Um, so... For Black people, you know, one of the things that bothers me is that we're always willing to forgive. But God does not forgive. So how the hell, heck, heck, how the heck are we going to still be in this perpetual slave mentality where we, somebody can come up and, and go into a church, a white boy go into a church and he can kill all these Black people inside the church and you say, I forgive them. But Lil Pookie and them, shoot up, you know, shoot up Kroger and kill a, kill some people, but we're ready to send them to the chamber. Yeah, Dylan Roof. I was not even trying to put his mind in my mental roller dick. Um, but it's just that slave mentality, that slave mentality thinking where we forget that Stockholm syndrome, where we have compassion for our for our murderers, we have compassion for those who hold us captive. It's sickening, and we don't understand why we are in need of a resurrection. Why we don't understand why Master Father Muhammad came to us. We don't understand why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad speaks the way he speaks, and why the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan speak the way they speak. Who, by the way, to answer your question, are Moses and Aaron? But we don't understand that because we love our we love those who hate us. As a whole, we love those who hate us, and then look at the nation of Islam like we're crazy because we're like, no, we we hate those whom God hates. We're turned upside down and inside out. And yes, we are in need of a we are we are in need of a resurrection, a full and complete resurrection. Um, and then I love what he brought up about the woman us being created in the image and the likeness of God. And side note, we are not goddesses, we are gods. So you, you let that part sleep sink in too. But that's all I wanted to say. Oh, and the last thing is your, your gifts will make room for you. Just think about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Think about the clip God on here right now, whose gifts have made room for him. I some like him. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. For those who are asking for the Zoom link, that is for people who are on inside of the power call and you're on the premium side. Let me share with you guys how or what the app looks like when you get in. So <clears throat> this is how the power call is for those who are, are wondering. So we got the power call, right? So you come in, we got all the replays for those who miss. And maybe you're watching us for the first time. Look, we got all the replays. You can go watch all of the replays there. Um, when you come on every morning on the free side, you're going to click home and then you go to events and it'll be right here. So the, the, the meeting tomorrow is already right here. And then once you become a premium member by hitting general right here, you're going to tap on general 
And then you just upgrade to the $25 a month and that'll get you access to what is called the Power Call community. Once you go into the Power Call community, this is where we talk to each other. You can make your own polls. See all this? This is all other people. We got our own chat that you have. We chatting with each other. Like it's a real community that we building, man. And then you're going to click on events. So right here, this is where you will get access to the Zoom link. So in the Power Call, and then we got testimonials, you got a lot of testimonies and things of that nature. And then let's see how many active members that we have right now, just so that y'all can see. Oh, man, we got 856 members. Come on, man. We almost at a thousand. So if everybody just invite one person. We will be at our, we will be at our first thousand members. So this is what the power call is, family. So every day, you know, we got clips that we post to get feedback on. We got the chat right here. So it's really dope, man. And like I say, we got the book club right here that we'll be doing soon. We're going to be starting that. And then we got Power Call courses. So we got our own courses inside of here. Those who want to master their money, we got a whole class in here. So it's a lot of stuff, man, that you guys are going to be able to get. And we're still adding stuff. So that's how that's how you get access to it, um, to the to the to the link and stuff like that that you're asking. OK, so. With that being said, I thank you all for coming on. Oh, zoom out a little bit. Oh, y'all couldn't see it? Dang. Could y'all see that? Y'all couldn't see that? It was cut off on the side. Okay, that's fine. As long as y'all seen like the middle part. So I thank you all for listening, man. Again, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Central Time, we'll be back. And then tomorrow, we got a good one. Tomorrow, we're going we're gonna to be talking about atonement and... I forgot. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Now, let me put it up on the screen for y'all because tomorrow going to be good, man. So bring your friends, bring your family members. Tomorrow is going to be really, really good, especially those family members who you got some beef with, especially those people who you've been kind of going through it with. Yeah, we're going to be talking about it tomorrow. Hold on. Let me download it for you so y'all can see this. Tomorrow is going to be very good. So do not miss tomorrow because this is the topic tomorrow, atonement and repairing relationships. Oh, do we all have some relationships that need repairing? Do we all have some relationships and people that we got to do some atonement with? So in the spirit of the upcoming anniversary of the Million Man March, OK, where the minister called for a million men and nearly two million showed up for a day of atonement. We're going to start this Friday off and take us up, take us into that weekend or we're going to start with atonement and repairing relationships. So do not miss. Do not miss tomorrow. 8 a.m. Central Time. Thank you all for listening. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Ben here. Brother Ben. Now Ben got a heck of a program. A lot of people listening to Brother Ben. And Ben tells them about the minister. And Ben tells them about the minister.